rigor. And Nancy and I have been talking a lot about rigor because everyone uses the word rigor, but no one can give us a definition of rigor. So we want to propose that rigor is a combination or a balance between difficulty and complexity. How much work, how much effort, how much time, and how much thinking, how much knowledge you need. It takes both. And that's where I think we've made some mistakes as a profession. Most of the time, rigor simply means more effort, more time, or more work. We want to make sure that we're also thinking about complexity. Here's a sample item, released item from a big test that's supposed to measure Common Core. And I would argue this item has virtually no complexity. Some students will find it difficult depending on how old they are and what their language proficiency is. But it never got more difficult. Sorry, it only got more difficult. It never got more complex. Here's another item, also released. And I would argue this one has more complexity, but isn't very difficult. If you know how to estimate and you know proportions, you're going to get this right. And we were thinking about this, and we were wondering if our society is super enamored when people do hard things. Look at this data from 2007. He memorized the exact order of 59 decks of cards, over 3,000 cards in order. That's impressive, hard. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but society gets really enamored with hard tasks, and we have to teach our, our parents and our communities to also be impressed with complex tasks. So in working on this grid, how we think about it. Some tasks that we give students are low difficulty, low complexity. They're, it's not that they are bad. They're just not difficult and not complex. In fact, we think all four of these quadrants are super important and they help us think about surface deep and transfer. In the low, low quadrant, we develop students' fluency, their procedural fluency, their conceptual fluency. In the high, low quadrant, we develop stamina. And there's a lot of kids who don't yet have a lot of stamina. We need lessons, tasks, assignments that build their stamina. We also want to build strategic thinking. How do we get kids to know when to deploy which kinds of things? It can also be metacognitive in nature, but really being strategic. And lastly, we want to develop their expertise. Students need to be in that quadrant of expertise, but if they don't have a lot of surface and deep knowledge, it is hard, it is nearly impossible to engage in highly difficult, highly complex tasks. So all four of these are important and they help us plan lessons for kids to learn more. For example, copying notes. Note taking is not unimportant. It's just a low difficult, low complexity task. As <coughs> having a timed reading task, <laughs> build your stamina. Wide reading, build your stamina. Studying those notes you took from a book or from a lecture is more strategic. And then analyzing arguments across text is more around expertise. And we can go on. There's all kinds of different tasks that would fit in each of these. The idea is that we help teachers plan lessons where they know which times they want kids in the fluency quadrant or the expertise quadrant or the strategic thinking quadrant or the stamina quadrant. <clears throat> 